fear not the darkness, but welcome its embrace. If you know that line, then you would know Assassin's Creed. Now, a couple of years back, more than that actually, Assassin's Creed 1 came out. Lukewarm reception, it was all right, nothing too great. Assassin's Creed 2 though, now that was a game and a half. And there were various sequels to do with it, Assassin's Creed 2, Bloodline and so forth, etc. Now, Assassin's Creed 3 has come out, it's set in a whole new era. And of course, we got our man Avery to lay down the score on what it's like. Hey, Avery Score here with another exciting episode of The Gamer Station, where this week we're checking out Assassin's Creed 3, kind of the fifth actual game in the canonical series without counting all of the crazy handheld spin-offs or anything like that. So getting you right into the action, when you pick up Assassin's Creed 3, it's taking place in a setting that you're well unaccustomed to if you've been uh, following the story of Ezio Auditore. Ezio has been retired and Desmond Miles is shot into the Animus to take on the role of first his ancestor, Haythorn Kenway. Now, you're only going to be playing as Haythorn Kenway for about two, three hours of gameplay. And you can pretty much tell from the guy's British accent, overly suave demeanor and kind of villainous aura that he's not the main character of the game. However, he's fun to play and he presents some cool new gameplay dynamics with the musket, which realistically takes a long time to load. Shortly thereafter, there's a big reveal, spoiler warning, that Haythorn uh, Kenway is in fact a Templar, a member of the evil order that the assassins have been trying to combat and Desmond Miles along with them for millennia. So Desmond has this, oh my god, moment steps out of the animus and then shortly thereafter reincarnates himself as the son of Haythorn Kenway and a noble squaw of the Massachusetts Wampanoag tribe, uh, Connor Kenway. Now, Connor Kenway plays very much like previous protagonists in the Assassin's Creed series. So if you're used to uh, manipulating Altair or Ezio Adetore, you're gonna be right at home here. Uh, pretty much you can run up and climb buildings, you can dispense with your enemies with a series of swords, hidden blades, or other tools at your disposal. But one thing that's new, uh, as Connor is a Native American, or at least half Native American, is he's very at home in the forest. So there are all sorts of hunting mini games where you can play, where you can hunt and skin foxes, venison, even bears and cougars, uh, which sometimes can be a fight for your life. Additionally, you can climb up trees, although only trees that bear telltale handholds. Uh, this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, you know, people complain about this throughout the Assassin's Creed series that how come I can climb this and I can't climb that? How come this fence is absolutely unclimbable? whereas this huge uh, Duomo is easy to scale. And the same complaints kind of ring true when you're in a forest setting. Uh, it's also rather unrealistic for these pine trees to suddenly have these perfect little handholds jutting out. But we'll forgive it, it works okay in practice. Additionally, when you're up in a tree, if the tree has kind of a V branch pattern, you can kick back and forth Mario style to get even higher in the canopy. Uh, so you're thrust into this kind of new ambiance, completely new setting for the game. Uh, one of the things that's striking is sort of the lack of these beautiful urban vistas that you're accustomed to perhaps with previous iterations of the franchise. The sweeping views of Firenze where you're just saying, wow, that's architectural beauty and specific information on the building. Obviously, this is early colonial America. The game starts at about 1730 and goes up through the revolutionary period, taking you through some uh, famous events such as the Boston Massacre, uh, the Tea Party, and other sort of events surrounding the American Revolution in New England. Um, so there's less there are fewer famous, famous buildings simply to, to speak of. In, in Boston, you'll see a, the old state house with the unicorn and the lion on the top, those lovely statues. But other than that, there's not a lot of recognizable things. And in general, you're just kind of in a brick maze uh, with not a lot of architectural gems. So if you like the Assassin's Creed series for sort of that uh, art historical perspective, you're not much gonna find that here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they've done quite a good job recreating the setting and the technology of the time. And if you've ever uh, been a buff on Americana or American history, uh, you're going to be well served here. Uh, some additions to the gameplay have been made. The combat system has been slightly tweaked 
uh, so that you have to have a little bit better timing for your counters. It's not sufficient to just hold the counter button, wait till someone attacks you, and then uh, be able to uh, retaliate with a flurry of slashes from your sword. You're gonna have to time that button press a little more methodically this time around. But at its core, that hasn't been shaken up very much. This is still very much, uh, you know, attack, attack, block, counter, counter, attack, attack. And you have the feeling both in climbing and in combat settings throughout the Assassin's Creed games, but especially in Assassin's Creed 3, that you're not necessarily controlling uh, your avatar, your ersatz, your protagonist. Uh, what you're doing is just entering a series of button combinations and watching beautiful animations take place. Uh, you don't feel like you have full control over the action uh, that's going on on screen. This is a complaint that I've leveled uh, at many Assassin's Creed games. It really hasn't been addressed and it continues to not be addressed. Uh, that said, there are some fun moments where you're battling, you know, dozens of guards, although it is realistic for you to be able to take, you know, several rounds of musket fire without incident. Anyway, uh, another notable uh, addition to the game is naval combat. That's something that you guys haven't seen before. So you can get into a ship with two masts, probably a schooner. I don't know, I'm not really a naval expert. And you have at your disposal a pivot gun and a cannon, uh, which you can use to dispatch enemies, often members of the Royal British Navy. So that's kind of a cool addition to gameplay, but it does take you out of the action a little bit. Uh, like many Assassin's Creed games, there's sort of these disjointed uh, set pieces or gameplay sequences that don't have a lot of connection to each other. And that's even more true this time around where you have more extensive sequences as Desmond Miles. Uh, there, does t there really is a disconnect between the sequences that you play in the Animus and the sequences that you play as the real protagonist of the Assassin's Creed series, Desmond Miles. Uh, it does all come together rather nicely with an interesting narrative, and if there's one strong point in this game, it's the characterization, the storytelling, and the dialogue. The voice acting is also tremendous uh, in the English version of the game, and one notable thing is that you will hear Native American languages spoken fluently and spoken extensively, so get ready to read those subtitles. That's something that I don't think I've ever seen before in a game, and it really adds a lot of atmosphere to it. Uh, if there is one huge letdown uh, in this title, it's the graphics. They're surprisingly poor. Uh, obviously, the graphics engine that's been used throughout the series is knocking on a little bit, starting to show its age, but beyond that, the texture work, the low polygon models, both for the trees, the characters, and the buildings really show here, and sometimes it can be distracting. Some of the trees will not even be rendered as 3D models, they'll just be simple drawings on the background, presumably in order to save RAM. If you compare this game to other modern titles on the PlayStation 3, you're going to be disappointed with Assassin's Creed 3. That said, probably the only thing that you need to know about this title is that it's an Assassin's Creed game, it's a pretty good one, and it'll provide a few hours of exciting and enjoyable gameplay. Despite its flaws, this is a decent title, and if you are a fan of the franchise, you will be well served here. Thanks for watching. That ends this week's episode, but don't worry, we'll be back same time, same place next week. Here's a question for you though, are you going to be playing Assassin's Creed 3? If so, why? If not, why? Leave us a message on Facebook or Twitter to let us know. Also, don't forget you can enjoy all sorts of things on our YouTube channel as well. My name is Adam Kerr-Rovers, until next time, yeah!